See? I'm washing dishes, see? It was, a, it was a morning, a Monday morning, I'm washing dishes. And I had my little girl, Usha, on the counter. And a man came in front of my kitchen window. Ah, uh, young man? I said, yes, sir. I heard that you've been experimenting with herbs. He said, yes. Well, I'm blind. I'm blind for 10, 11 years. Could you help me? I said, I'll try. If you make me see, I give you a million dollars. I gave the man the substance. When am I going to see? I said, by Friday. Now, why did I select Friday until this day? I don't know. <laughs> but I was so sure of myself. But how could a boy that didn't go to school be so sure of himself? So, the man went home with the medicine. And the Wednesday, good morning, young man. I raised my right hand. You say you raise your right hand. I wink my left eye. You say you wink your left eye. I said the man is seeing. At that point of my journey, I couldn't explain that. I know it's a bunch of herbs that cleanse the man's body, but they were all alkali plants. And this is where now comes into picture something that is most important. Remember what I did? I selected alkali plants, right? Not the acid ones. But why would someone make acid plants? This is where the other part of the story gets good. And it began with a naked black woman in the jungles of Africa. This naked black woman was always in my eyes. I could never get her out of my eyes. When everybody was talking about Socrates and Plato, I was looking at this naked black woman. And everybody went to Egypt, where I'm looking at this naked black woman again. But I can't put her into any perspective. And one day it came. It was early in the morning. I just came out of a sleep. I dreamt that I would listen to John Coltrane play music, but it was the television that I had on channel 850 that was influencing my brain with the music of John Coltrane. That does occur, even with radio, when you put it on and leave it on your dream that you're looking at the audience. So, in the dream, the woman appeared again from behind this tree. Still couldn't understand how am I going to put this woman in any perspective. So, but I was coming to Los Angeles that morning, and I had to go to the airport, and the governor of the city, of the state, is at the airport telling folks how I had cured a little girl of leukemia named Alcida. But there are two missionaries. They are Caucasian. They came to me and said, we heard about your miracle cures. I said, I don't know what a miracle is. What do you mean? The governor said you cure leukemia. I said, that's not a miracle. Why not a miracle? I said, I'm a black man. Nothing is a miracle. Because we reduce everything to the least common denominator. What do you mean miracle? To you it is, not to me. He say, have you been saved? Saved? From what? <laughs> I mean, he said, have I been saved? Now why would he ask me that question? He said, from your sins, of course. I said, oh God. <laughs> I said, you know, man, I looked at you guys, and I saw two very intelligent people standing there. But now I've got to question that. He said, why? Because the color of my skin should have prevented you from asking me and telling me that I'm sinful. And what does the color of your skin have to do with it? 
Ha, say young man, the color of my skin had to do with everything. He said, how? I said, well, I'm the son of a naked woman in the jungles of Africa. She didn't have any alcohol. She didn't have any prostitution. She didn't have any supermarkets. She didn't have any hospitals. She didn't have any doctors. She didn't have any medicine. She didn't have any disease. The woman didn't have any church. She didn't have any religion because she wasn't sinful. My mama didn't even have money. And you call me sinful? And I am her son? Come on, behave yourself. <laughs> behave yourself. I am the son of a sinless woman and I become sinful? Fine, when? When did I become sinful? You see, living in that state of sinfulness, you reduce yourself. No, you don't do that. You're not sinful. You were never sinful. And if you were, God has played a game on us. God has made sinful people. So what occurs? What occurs? Well, we're going to soon see. The black woman in the jungle didn't eat rice, beans, chicken, hogs, goats, lamb. But what did she eat? And why is that important? It is. Because she walked around without no clothes. Between her brothers, and nobody was jumping on her. And now you wear clothes, and they take them off of you and rape you. So she lived in an ethical environment. She lived in a moral environment. So we got to take another look. We got to take another look at her. Because that's her mama. And it is said in your Bible, Honor thy mother and thy father that thy days may be long upon the land. No stuff. Well, my mom and daddy didn't eat no rice and beans. And no hog mouths. And they didn't go to church. Because it wasn't sinful. You understand? Sinful people need to go to church to repent. Well, I'm not sinful. So now the boy had grown up. And look what he's seeing. That that naked woman in the jungle raised the bar and set the standards. And from her, understanding her and her world that was alkali, I was able to draw from that world the compound that we make today that heal people. Scientists call that phosphates, carbonates, iodides, and bromides. That's science. Science also says that AIDS, diabetes, sickle cell anemia are all the result of a virus, a germ, or a bacteria. Not so. Not so. Ladies and gentlemen, the black man, the Chinese, the Indian, the Eskimo, the white man. We all are different. Not one is better than the other. We all are different. If you take your blood and put it on a microscope or go to a hematologist, he will tell you it's different. Oh yeah? Well, if my blood is different, then my compounds or medicine should be different, right? But they gave everybody the same thing. What a mistake. But we didn't see it. Not only that. We eat the same food. That doesn't happen in the naturalness of life. Gorillas doesn't eat polar bear food. So the scientists call food that nourishes the body phosphates, carbonates, iodides, and bromides. Mama in the jungle didn't have to know that because all she had was that. There was no man-made food then. So she lived in a beautiful environment 
This is why she didn't wear any clothes. It wasn't necessary. She lived like that all her life until the foreigners came. Ah, she's naked. <laughs> she's naked. God made clothes then. You see? You see how sick we are? We all are sick. We need each other. So it was with that intent that I came into this particular vocation. I quit my job. I quit my job. I said, I'm going to heal the world. I'm going to make everybody happy. <laughs>